So, for the same project, I'm going to need the welder and the uh, 5000 watt uh, APC inverter for. I'm going to need a rather quickly deployable portable solar charging and discharging system. And uh, that's what I've got this bag for. Yes, so I need this to be a complete system where I've got a battery fuse, a charge controller and inputs and outputs for those in a very quickly accessible way. So the way I'm going to go about that is I'm going to install everything in this bright red uh, box which I found in a mouldy room in the basement sometime and uh, just hook on a load of Anderson and uh, these uh, kind of not really Andersons you get out of APC UPSs and just make it so that you can plug a bunch of wires in and be ready to go right away. So the initial design idea is uh, I needed to handle about a hundred amps because obviously that APC inverter is going to go through it. And these normal uh, Anderson and APC connectors only handle 50 amps. So I'm going to be crude about it and just use two in parallel for the input and output and one single for the solar panel input and perhaps one extra for just uh, an a general purpose input output for any extra loads. Yeah, but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is probably strip out all this horrible grey insulate stinky mouldy stuff and perhaps make a backing plate to mount everything on to make it a bit more accessible. So let's go! Oh, there we go, that's one empty box. That stuff smells Horrible, be happy this isn't smell of vision. And it certainly is of a very staggeringly high quality. Uh, anyway, now I'm going to cut a big hole in this panel because this guy does not like to be in enclosed spaces and I don't need it to be particularly well protected anyway. And if you're curious to see what goes on inside of a 160 amp AC or DC uh, resettable uh, fuse, well, here you go, that's the connection gap. That's some co quite considerable isolation going on. <laughs> I'm not entirely certain as to what uh, this assembly is intended to achieve, but it seems that it's kind of collecting grime that comes uh, flying off when the giant arc is made and perhaps it's acting as some kind of a flame suppressor because it's certainly gone violent in there. And that's the best packing plate I could manage to scourge up around here. It's just a couple of like white fiberboard pieces cut to length. It's split in two but it's good enough. Makes it easier to get in and out I suppose. Uh, I still have to use a lot of screws and make it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't care how it looks, etc. I just need something to be able to screw stuff into when mounting all the electrics. Anyway, with these uh, now in, in there, I've uh, got a height baseline. So what I'm going to do now is uh, cut a hole in this side uh, for the power in and output. And uh, for that I'm just going to use uh, a Dremel, uh, because I don't have any more suitable tool. Wish me luck! And there we go. Cutting that was literally hell on earth. Uh, I wish I had more proper tools for this. But the end result is pretty good. I've got space for the five APC connectors that I need. And we got a bit of a look at what the box is actually made out of. And that's uh, actually quite considerably thicker than I thought. So it's aluminium coated plywood, which is, uh, let's see. And just about five millimeters thick. Oh, that's better than I thought. I thought it was going to be some super thin stuff given how rickety and light this thing seems, but go figure. And many, many hours later, we've finally got a mock up of this thing. Well, I say mock up, I mean everything assembled. So, uh, this is the giant switch, of course. This is the solar controller. This is a solar panel. Uh, separator and this is a battery separator for smaller loads. 
So the way it's wired up is the battery is coming in here through these two APC special kind of anders and connectors, Olsen's I call them, and going into the breaker, coming out the other side of course, where it goes straight to the two Olsen's going to the load. It's also snaking its way off to uh, this uh, 14 to 20 amp breaker where it's going forward to uh, the charge controller. Uh, 20 amps is more than adequate for what I'm going to get out of this thing since I've only got a 200-ish watt solar panel facing straight up. It's also going to this unused phase here where I can just, if necessary, hook up some other thing, perhaps a cigarette lighter outlet or something along the lines. I'm not doing that right now though. Uh, on this uh, solar connector you can see I used a normal Anderson connector rather than the Olsen uh, since uh, I wanted to have a different connector for the solar since uh, you can get it up to about 30 volts so if I were to accidentally hook that to uh, the batteries or the load uh, something would go very very wrong and I figured since I've got two styles of connectors and the only reason I'm not using these is because I've only got like three uh, it'll do quite well to separate that. And this one goes uh, also into the third unused face of a big breaker and that's just to make sure that the solar gets disconnected when I flip the battery breaker because if you connect just solar to this and no battery then you get a, can get a rather high 8-bit voltage out of it and it goes all mad and insane and doesn't work right at all. So that's just a bit of a safety feature. And uh, in case uh, there's an overload condition on this, so that this would flip but uh, not the solar panel so that we wouldn't have all kinds of weirdness going on on the actual load side. The other end of the solar connector just goes straight to this little tiny extension and into the solar breaker where I can just turn off the solar panel individually if necessary. A little 10 amp breaker. So, that's the connection. Let's uh, give it a test run. Alright, so, uh, I've now got a little tiny, hopefully kind of half discharged battery connected up to the battery connector. I've got uh, this little load tester thingy connected up to the output just to see that we're getting power there, the right polarity. And uh, to the solar panel input I've got a little solar panel surrogate, i.e. my power supply set to 32 volts at 1 amp going through that 1 ohm resistor over there. So if everything works we should charge this battery and power this device when I flick everything on. So, starting out, we should power this on when I flick the main breaker. And we do. It's measuring 12.9. Oh, Perhaps it's not so empty. Anyway, let's turn on the charge controller. And that's powering on just fine, measuring 12.6 and charging at 0 watts. So, let's turn on the solar. And we're charging right away. It just went straight to constant voltage mode since the battery is so full. No problems at all. Wonderful. Although, let's see if my security device works. And if we flip this breaker, it will lose power to the load. And we do. Sweet. So, now that I know my layout, all that's left to do is basically make a few holes for ventilation and access. And... We're really starting to get finished with this thing. Ah, there we go. Holes and some kind of vent ventilation on top. Sadly though, like a sixth grade, I failed to follow my own drill mark, so if you have holes up in this region turned out all wonky and shit. Oh well, this thing wasn't much for the world to begin with. Anyway, I'm curious to see if it'll line up. This looks a lot better from the camera angle, but in real life it's a bit off, off to the side. But that doesn't really matter. It sticks through, it can be used. That's fine. And the charge controller should be doing quite well. It's got ventilation right above the heatsink and it can be accessed, it's got some air to get in there. I think this is going to work out just fine. Although I'm going to have to glue this red aluminium foil back onto the wood because that's not been very well glued at all here in the middle. 
but that's no big deal. Alright, a few nights later and significant progress has been made. Uh, most notably, everything's now been mounted to the case for backing plug is just screwed in using uh, short screws since it's a two-part uh, backing plate I had to add quite a few since one in each corner just wouldn't do it would just split apart and we've got here vent holes Ugh. and in addition I added five DC plugs for outputs on the side which are controlled by these five switches and uh, since these are DC plugs and control a handle a lot of current I had To add a 2.4 amp breaker, this is a normal residential free free face breaker that I happen to have, made a little din rail in the bottom there, and uh, this is just a, a fuse of the plugs. Uh, the way I used it uh, is uh, it's connected to the output of the charge controller, so it's got under voltage protection and stuff like that, just in case, and. Uh, it, one of the plugs is connected to one of the faces and the four others share two faces. So we've got a combined output of one, basically 2.4 amps shared between two plugs, 2.4 amps shared between two other plugs and one plug which will do 2.4 amps on its own. Now that, that can be uh, exceeded in peaks for probably minutes at a time so that's not an issue. Uh, when you're using this in a DC configuration, you basically just have a thermal fuse in them to limit the current and none of that uh, peak detection stuff actually works with DC, at least not in most of them, so it should work quite fine. It turned out pretty tight in here, uh, there's not a whole lot of room to spare and uh, there's certainly not a whole lot of room for cooling the charge controller, but I think it'll be fine. The, if you've seen my review on this thing, they're very efficient, well over 90% for pretty much all the time, so we're not going to get more than a couple of watts of loss in this, so I'm not too concerned. As far as uh, connecting the uh, control panel up, uh, I just used a single Cat5 wire, uh, that's why I chose such a weak breaker, uh, because uh, this is a uh, 24 gauge wire, it can do just over 3 amps reliably per wire so we have some margins at 2.4 and everything just runs through this cat5 wire which falls down there when you open and close it, it's actually connect, uh, mounted with a zip tie screwed to the case here so it's not just flapping around and everything's soldered together in both ends so this really isn't removable anymore the DC plugs are the kind which you just thread into the case and then put a nut on the back, so they should be quite securely in place. Something I had to do a bit weirdly though is because these Cat5 wires are so thin, these breakers are made for 1.5 square millimeters wire and above, and we have so little space here, I actually just made little connectors by soldering some 2.5 square millimeter wire onto the end of a Cat5 at a 90 degree angle and shoved that in there and screwed it in place. So we have a little terminations there, it's not just shoved in there because that would not work. So there you go, that's my quickly deployable solar charge controller for 12 volt systems handling a maximum roughly one phase and watt inverter and a maximum of a 300 watt solar panel or QDSCC 121 million 300 for short. So Thank you for watching. Cheerio.